1979, China opened the biggest window in the world to the outside. And China suddenly dazzled people with a panorama of change. Observers must admit, in its meeting with the world, China has preserved its own special character. 30 years of opening has been a time of bravely facing the new and stepping forward on a path of our own choosing. Several respected international polls rank us number one in terms of public confidence in the future. Is this confidence underpinned by GDP growth or thousands of years of culture or the efforts of many millions of people? We believe China will deliver an answer before too long. For thousands of years of Chinese civilization, tea has always been an important part of Chinese culture and heritage. For the Chinese, tea brings peace and harmony. Tea lifts the spirit, purifies the heart, and calms the mind. The bitter sweetness of tea reflects the philosophy of finding the sweet memories in life, even when there is loneliness and despair. When people get together, tea is the glue that makes friends of strangers turning cold, cold indifference into warm familiarity. It bridges the distance between minds, helping to create a hospitable feeling. For the Chinese, drinking tea is not only a sensual enjoyment, it is also a dialogue between the body, the spirit, and the soul. Only when the heart is at peace can you perform the actions associated with making tea with grace and harmony. We will now use the Chinese tea ceremony to provide a glimpse into the philosophy, art, culture, value, beliefs, and customs popular in the oriental world. As the renowned Chinese philosopher once said, one cannot learn Chinese culture and values without knowing the most important and influential character in Chinese history. We now present to you Confucius, who, who, whose ethics are the single most important element in Chinese people's values and beliefs. All aspects of Chinese people's lives are, in, to some extent, influenced by the teaching of Confucius. For almost 2,000 years, Confucius analects have been the fundamental course of study for any Chinese scholar. Given the great significance of tea, not only to the Chinese, but also to the whole of Asian culture, we wish to use this tea ceremony to pay tribute to all teachers here today. We will now show how to drink Chinese tea in the traditional three-step manner. Teachers, please follow our demonstration in drinking the tea. The first sip, which is small, signifies that you accept the tea and thank the host for serving it. The second small sip is to test the tea. The tea should be held in your mouth for a few seconds to savor the great taste of the tea before swallowing. The third sip is for the pure enjoyment of the tea. You may now finish the whole cup. Teachers, you may keep the cups. In addition to representing a philosophy of life, tea has also come to be combined with other aspects of culture and art, giving tea a dynamic and artistic dimension. Teapot appreciation, flower arrangements, and ceramic art have all traditionally played an integral part in tea culture. Additionally, the Yuzin, a musical instrument, calligraphy, and painting are described by Confucius in the Analects as essential for the scholar. These essentials combined with tea culture reflect the artistic spirit in Chinese scholars' lives. First, Chinese tea culture is combined with music. It combined, in combination with music, tea gains an atmospheric dimension so that tea is never just tea. It may be the moon, the wind, the mountain, or the river. There is a kind of poetry that exists within the embrace of tea and music. Secondly, tea is usually combined with calligraphy as a especially emotional form of art. As every stroke in the writing carries the thoughts and feelings of the artist, the Chinese consider calligraphy a highly disciplined mental exercise that coordinates body and soul, a matter of personal expression as well as a way to enhance one's physical and spiritual well-being. Calligraphy is regarded as the most inspiring form of art in Chinese culture. 
Chinese painting is also a part of TR. It's internal spirit helping to guide the outward form. Paintings may be finely detailed, but they are not considered solely with outward appearance. In the spirit of Chinese painting, the painter leads viewers into a world where souls are free to roam. They paint to present the spirit of the object. The brush strokes may be brief and simple, but they are powerful in expressing the painter's spirit or, or mood. Painting together with Chinese medicine and Peking opera, they are regarded as three essential aspects of Chinese culture. Now, we present the traditional Ch Chinese wedding ceremony with, where tea plays a meaningful role. At the center of the ceremonial hall, the bride and groom will first bow to heaven and to earth to pay their respects and show that, that they are sincere and willing to live in perfect harmony with nature. Second, they bow to groom's parents to show their respect to the parents. Third, they bow to each other to show mutual respect. Then the bride will offer the parents a cup of the finest tea. It is a popular belief that a marriage contracted with tea will be eternal and will produce many descendants. The drinking of tea signifies the solidity of the marriage. Parents accept the tea signifying their approval of the match. Then the groom will take off the bride's kerchief with a wooden rod and see the bride for the first time. This is the traditional Chinese wedding ceremony. Please have a cup of tea. In Chinese culture, when you hear the words, please have a cup of tea, you know you are being given the warmest of welcome. Whether weak or strong, cold or hot, whether you drink a lot or only a little, the spirit of the Chinese is contained within that little cup of tea. With this cup of tea, we invite you to the world of Chinese culture. To understand China, three facts must never be forgotten. China is history, China is land, China is people. Touring China is trekking into some 5,000 years of history, as well as taking a giant step into the future. There are so many Chinas. This is a country where a half a billion people live on $2 a day but where hundreds of millions now experience modern prosperity. It is a country where the few rule the many, where protest does not welcome, a country that still can't shake the echoes of the 1989 Tiananmen crackdown. It is a country racing into the future, confident it can claim its place on its own terms. The successful Olympic bid was a validation of its hard-fought reawakening after the painful memories of foreign occupation, the Cultural Revolution, years of isolation. It has been a long, long march, a long march to a night that may be the most significant in modern Chinese history. For the people of China, this is a night of great consequence and patriotic pride that cannot be underestimated. A night for the Chinese people to stand tall. It's China's coming out party, and we all understand the sense in which that applies. But to many people in China, this is really a return to glory, a moment of redemption. That's right, and the Chinese will be very quick to tell you that for nine of the last ten centuries, they had the biggest GDP on the planet. But it's also important to keep in mind they're very aware nothing ends when the games end. The process of reform and opening only gets more complex from this point on. So we are really excited to present China to you today. And now that you've seen some of the most important Chinese traditions, we wanted to talk to you a little bit about China over the past few decades and how they really evolved to become one of the largest economies in the world today. So, let's start by taking a look at Beijing in 1979. Today, it's one of the most populated cities in the world and has a rapidly expanding economy. So, can anybody guess where the busiest airport in the world is located? 
Correct. This is the Beijing Capital International Airport. It's expected to be completed in 2015 and is going to be the largest airport in the world. And does anyone know where the 2008 Summer Olympics were held? Fantastic. So the Summer Olympics did a lot for Beijing in terms of bringing it to the forefront of the global community. The Olympics were known as a coming out party for China, demonstrating its great economic and political power to the international community. This is Shanghai in 1979, and today it's a primary global financial center. Here's Chongqing in 1979, which is considered today one of the top emerging mega cities in China. This is Guangzhou in 1979. Today, it's the largest city in one of China's wealthiest provinces. Now, can anyone tell me what the third largest international financial center is in the world? Wonderful, it is Hong Kong, and it's third in the world behind New York City and London. So how do you explain such extraordinary progress in China from 1979 to 2013? In 1978, a new economic reform was implemented to open up China's economy and spur economic growth. The amount of goods and services produced skyrocketed, putting China second in the world behind the U.S. The economic reform brought about improvements in China's rail network. So these images show the quality of the rail network in the past, and today, China is well known for having high-speed bullet trains that travel almost 200 miles per hour. So just to put this in perspective, if you were to ride the Amtrak from New York to Key West, it would take 16 hours, whereas on a high-speed train from China, it would only take eight, which is half the time. The various classes range from business class being the most expensive to coach being the most economical option. The Shanghai Magnetic Levitation Train is the world's fastest train in regular commercial service. Thanks to industrial reform, China has overtaken the U.S. as the world's largest industrial producer. It's also become the world's largest energy consumer, leading to a major pollution problem in the city. To combat this, China invested almost $70 billion in 2012 in clean technology, making it the world's leading investor in green energy. China has also been investing in new energy sources, such as wind power, and is becoming a leader in solar power as well. China's agricultural reforms have led to increased production and technological innovation, and in the past five years, they've developed 2,600 new varieties of staple crops. China's economic growth has been spurred by high technology, including supercomputers, which China is known for having the fastest in the world. Because China is the world's top carbon emitter, it has deemed clean technology a national priority. China is also the world's largest car market and is expected to add 170 million cars in the next five years. And this is a lot, so the government started an incentive program. So if you know anyone that owns a Prius, if they would have bought it in China, the government would have offered them $10,000 to buy that car. Because of this, global automakers are rushing to introduce alternative energy cars in China. Economic reform has also allowed China to be more active in space exploration. It is the third country in the world to launch an astronaut into orbit and has made steady progress, including opening an um, international space lab. China's space station will be completed in 2020 in time for the retirement of the current international space. And lastly, China is establishing itself as a world power in education. The Chinese place a heavy emphasis on education, and excelling in exams and classes are of utmost importance to every young person. The number of college graduates in the past 10 years has tripled, and education spending has increased fivefold. So this is really impressive, especially when we see numbers for the U.S. either remaining stagnant or going down. Education rankings show that China ranks first in the world in performance in math, science, and reading. Students start to learn English in their early years. And since China is the world's most populated country, it may soon become the world's largest English-speaking country as well. So ultimately, to prepare our students to meet future global challenges and be really competitive in the job market, it's absolutely essential that we learn from new China in the 21st century. So thank you so much for visiting China with us today.